Okay, take one. Hopefully this will be my only take on this video. This is the uh, solar, the basic bare bone solar generation um, system that I, that I showed in my uh, first video on a 104. This video is 204. This is a system in operation. And, and basically it is the, um, the solar charge controller that I had in the other video with the cut up dog bone. Um, my external 12 volt loads that are off the charge controller right now, there's, there's nothing plugged into that. What I've done is I've gone battery direct just using these clamp cables because I have more than one of these boxes. And the little charging jack on there is, is only capable of a trickle charge. And I can actually charge one of these boxes up very quickly with a direct battery connection. Now one thing I'm doing on this is I'm fusing the, the negative side, okay? And it's it, because the only other way I can get to the battery that's inside that box uh, on a more direct connection is through the jumper cable leads. And then this thing has a switch back here to turn a jumper cable leads on and off. Now we've got an AC outlet. I'm gonna go over that in a few minutes. We've got a small air compressor which I, I don't use a whole lot on the campsite, but it's nice to have around. The, um, but here's the thing, we can turn these leads on and off, so then that gives me a, a little safety margin when I'm dealing with stuff electrical here, um, especially since you know the most efficient way to get into these leads is just to pinch some bare wire. Um, and then I've gone up, you know, a red positive, green negative, and um, my incoming wire again i used the thickest dog bone wire gauge i could find it goes to a conventional power cord uh, the cord's not heating up any it's it, it has plenty of capacity to care of this much 12 volt power and it's also it's an indoor outdoor cord so um, what i'm doing is i'm setting all of this stuff up in in under a tent tarp uh, just in case we get some rain out here in eastern Oregon, which is unlikely, but um, You know as they're setting up a remote retreat site uh, and it's a regular regular construction more or less um, Where we, we st I still want to use power tools, okay? You can't build a house with a I mean you're not going to build a respectable dwelling with a survival knife, okay? Um, we're using power tools. I'm using the Ryobi system primarily because Ryobi has the the best uh, 12 volt charger notice that it's plugged into the power pack now i'm not going to run this 12 volt charger directly off my charge controller i want to use the battery in the power pack to even out the flow of power okay and i could plug two of these chargers in at one time today i might do it but I'm, I'm running a little bit smaller panel array than I had in the last video, so I, I'm being cautious. I'm only charging one battery at a time. Everything that I can tell from testing for the last day is that I, I have normal charge times with the battery packs. It's, it's not taking unusually long, which means I'm kind of matching my capacity on all of this. I'm having to run both DeWalt and Ryobi tools. Um, the Ryobi tools have a superior battery. DeWalt tools have superior cutting power on their specialized tools and so that's one of the DeWalt battery packs. One thing is that this charge box has you know 110 outlets on it but those are those are good for devices it seems the computer the laptops tolerant of that I'm not getting Wi-Fi out here so there's just no reason to try and run that but just in case we get a small 110 device we want to get running and run on that now this two gang charger this 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 light here is a really good worksite light um, you've been using a lot um, but the 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 electronics on this and I think it was because it, it's it's not made to be happy through kind of a low-level basic inverter which is built into this box I'm, I'm not getting real good action plugging this into something. They seem to not like each other's circuit breakers or it's got the GFCI built into it. And it seems to be, um, when you're running a 12 volt off grid system, this thing seems to want to be a battery user, but not a battery charger. Now I don't have any DeWalt lithium batteries, but if you need to use DeWalt lithium batteries on a 12 volt charge, 
uh, base system, I, I guess you got to get their specialized charger, but I'm using their standard one. But what this does is this allows me to come out here um, into eastern Oregon. You know, there's power far away, just not nearby. But I can bring out a batch of batteries, and I've been able to kind of luxury camp this with um, lights, lanterns, uh, power tools. Uh, the, the only thing that's kind of running a little short is a lack of using a table saw, but we're, we're working on a, a, a cart type battery pack and in, in inverter system that, that probably will get that in going. We're also doing a little bit of experimentation with a 48 volt panel array that may be able to run a uh, table saw directly, we're just not sure. But the, uh, th this is the small budget solar generator in action again, it's like a $40 charge controller, um, $80 to $100 for one of these boxes, common electrical cord, I'm not using specialized connectors on this. Now, that system I had with 280 watt panels hinged together, not long after I made that video, a guy came over and bought that from me. It's, it's, it's on his trailer right now or as a carryout system because he had kind of maxed out the roof space, wanted to make a little more power, and he had a bunch of radio equipment on his trailer. So I'm using the single lead on this. Uh, I kept the other lead in case I want to daisy chain another panel into this. It would be a parallel hookup however because we still got you know pretty much desert sunlight right out here um, and it's dawn to dusk sunlight I'm, I'm on a hilltop sort of a place and um, the uh, gets plenty of power it, there's there's some times I feel guilty because there's really not a lot plugged in and charging but we're, um, I'm doing this off a single 80 watt panel. What I may do is redo a system where it's two of the 50 watt panels uh, hooked together, you know, kind of like in a book model. Because this gets a little tricky to carry in my truck, but it's not bad. And, uh, and basically the power cords and all that can go in an old laptop bag and that becomes a carry out power management system along with a couple of the Harbor Freight uh, deals. But here we've got the, uh, you know, just a common green cord. And something like this, I, I'm not going out of my way to camouflage anything here. But if, if you were to camo this whole system up because you want to do kind of a remote situation and, and be discreet about it, that, that can be done. You know, you gotta do a little judicious uh, masking before you start painting this stuff. But basically, um, you know, you, you can have some distance, you got a, 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 a you know, a, a green discrete colored power cord, it'll pick up some of the local dust and camouflage itself even better. Um, you know, a good discrete distance between your solar panel and, um, your camp and your equipment. I'm not stretching much more than this cord, which I, I think is a 30 foot cord. Uh, maybe it's a 50, I, I don't know. It's, it's not a huge cord. Um, it, it might be 50 feet. So it, if you're not trying to stretch the cord too far, you're, you're, you know, you're in good shape by remote is placing your panels, running this little, little unit discreetly. Um, I, I have it out on the rock for display purposes and just so I can see everything. But when I come up with a little bit better plug system, the, 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 the it's hard to do this without it being a mess, but I could maybe do this in a Pelican box or something like that. But I end up having to carry the batteries and the chargers, again, using two, two battery systems. But there's so many lights, tools, power items, different types of lights that you can run off these batteries. You're really in business. So I, so I use two of these boxes. Um, there's, there's a situation where I can turn off my... Uh, I can turn off the leads to the battery and then press my little power checker button. Right now, that's just telling me charging voltage. It means my, my, my panel is just cooking at full power. Everything's cooking at full power and um, this, this thing is charging batteries. Um, bright sunlight, it, kind of, it gets a little tricky to tell your LEDs. The other thing that can happen is because the little cigarette letter plug things are spring loaded they can push themselves out of contact and you gotta, especially in the DeWalt one for some reason, the little spring-loaded contact isn't, it's not the best system. Again, this was made for car cigarette lighters in the 1950s. Um, 
if I had my own way and I was building these custom, I would use a different type of a 12 volt plug or, uh, you know, go over to conventional house plugs and just make sure you get the polarity right. Um, which is when I, when I, I think when I, I want to get one more of these things and I'm going to rig it where I, uh, um, I'm going to clip the ends, get, get a 12 volt, or I'm going to get a regular house plug, get the polarity right and just start plugging it into these. And then, um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with the battery clamp deal, but again, this jumper box could jump a vehicle. A custom power station, most of the time, those don't have the jumper cables on them. So, you know, a little plus and minus on how you're going to do it. But this is a, a low-budget, fully functional solar generator system, completely operational. And, um, you know, 250-ish, 300-ish. Again, you scale it up according to what power tools and lights and other items you're using. And I'll show a little bit more on a how-to later, but this is pretty much how it looks fully functional.